today we're going to be working on what's called peyote or gourd stitch and it's we're going to do it around this flute now the thing about peyote stitch is you can do it off of an item but I find it far better on and you cannot do it around anything squared um, the best thing to do is when you, you choose your item I like to wrap it in buckskin or wool to give it something to start as you're beating it's going to snug up and it's not it wouldn't slide off of just the bare wood but it looks makes it looks finished and when you're first starting it gives it something so it's not slipping so what I've done is I've already stitched my buckskin to my flute and all and I've got some beads ready now these are size 11's these particular beads come from Crazy Crow and Driftstone Pueblo. You can look both of those up. They have good quality beads. The thing to keep in mind is choose a size. I recommend 11s. They have the biggest quality of colors. And stick to a brand. Find one you like and stick to it so that your sizes stay the same. Because one, one company to another, a lot of times, even though they claim it's an 11 or a 10 or a 9 or whatever, they will be slightly off in size and it will throw your work off. Also, if you're going to be doing a large project, buy as many beads as you want because dye lots, just like in anything else, can vary from uh, buying point to buying point. I like to use size double aught thread. This is regular beading thread. Um, I find it works better in, best in any size of beads that you're using. Um, if you're doing large beads, like if you want to go up to eights or nines, something more like a pony bead, then I would go up in size on thread just to hold the weight. But for anything from a tw size 12 bead up to a size 10, I recommend double odd. Always choose a needle one size smaller than the beads you're working. I'm working size 11, so this is a size 12 needle. Keep in mind, the larger the number, the smaller the bead and the smaller the needle. Um, I have mine doubled for strength for this particular type of bead work. Now what we're going to do is, it doesn't really matter if you start at which end you start at, whichever is most comfortable. What you're going to do is you're going to wrap your thread, let me get this out of the way, you're going to wrap your thread around whichever end that you want to start. Tie a simple square knot. This is the base of what you're doing. Try to line up your thread to wherever you want your beadwork to actually start. I'm going to do this a little about a half inch away from the edge so that you get some of that leather trim that's going to stick out when I bead. If you want to do it edge to edge you can but I like to have that bead work, that leather stick out just a little bit. Now whatever color you choose it doesn't matter what you're going to do is you're going to string on as many beads as it takes to go around your item leaving about a half inch gap and I'll show you what I mean here. Now. Another point is I recommend on this type of beadwork you use short needles. The long needles work really good for straight pieces, but going around something, they tend to bend when you're trying to work around an item, so I recommend the short uh, needles for this type of project. But it's each his own. You've got to feel it out and figure out um, what you're the most comfortable with. I'm going to start with red because I like a, a dark background color. It makes the rest of the pattern really stand out. The cool thing about peyote stitch versus any other stitch is that it's a little more creative. You can mess with patterns uh, a lot more, at least to me, than you can. When you're doing a straight square stitch or brick stitch, you follow a lot more patterns. I like doing peyote when I just feel like making something up. Okay, we've got our beads all the way around, and like I said, you want to leave a gap between your beads. What you're going to do is you're going to take your needle and run it through these to lock this row in place. Now, what you're going to do is take your needle and go all the way back around the row that you've just put on, because you want to get that as snug as possible in place. This, these first couple of rows are going to feel like they're too loose and they're moving around too much. Don't worry about it. Keep them as snug as you can, but it's going to, because it's going to snug up as you go to the point that the whole thing will not move. But these first few rows, the beads just wiggle all over the place. Pick 
pick a point that you kind of want to be your center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back around to where my center is pretty much right smack in the middle of my stitching on the back of my leather. So now, and you notice there's a little bit of gap here. That's fine because we, we left that half inch gap because we're going to need the playroom when we start to add our beads. Now, since it's right now, you have your, your band around. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take one bead. Now pick a direction, however it's comfortable for you to run. Now remember, if you're running it this way, your beads are going to come down. So we have to flip this up so that as we go around, our beadwork is coming down towards us. Get a good grip on it. What you're going to do, okay, so this first row we're going to take one bead on and we're just going to slide our needle you're going over one bead and into the next bead so you're stacking them it's kind of like layering bricks don't worry about this first row not being not looking real pretty or uniformed it's not going to because you're trying to get it set but as you can see they're they'll form little rows but as you also see the stitches are split spreading out which is why we wanted to leave that gap because what would happen is as these spread if we had our beads all the way around and we did this with that spread you'd wind up with this bunchy section of beads because you've now spread it to further than your loop it's actually better to have um, too, too much space in here because you can always add a bead in than it is to have not enough and have to take beads back out we've come back around and what we're going to do is we don't want a continuous row so when we come back through here what we're going to do is slide our needle through the bead like we have been but then we're going to slide it through that bead we added on the first row that way when we come out on our next row we're starting the next row so there's no just con continuous loop you have a specific this is where it starts this is where it stops this is your first row as you can see it looks a little bit different in different places but it'll it'll snug up it's already started to snug to where it doesn't wiggle like it was now at the I'm gonna go ahead and do another red row to kind of form up this edge so that it, we have a distinct this is a red border and from this point we just start exactly the way we were before except now as you can see we have this nice spacing where there's no question on what bead our needle goes through we get a, this nice spacing every other row this row will have this, this this cool space but if you look back here on our next row we're going to be a little tight again it goes back and forth that way this row is the easiest to put on because you there's no you're not fighting getting your needle in between the beads it just slides right through real simple okay I've come around and I've done several rows to give us a nice bulky red section and we're gonna we're back down here to the back now one thing I should point out is that as you go around peyote is kind of a rotation around the piece so your lock-in bead that started here was now over here and it'll slowly work its way all the way around that's normal don't panic now we're gonna add a, a bead you can choose any color you like for the purpose of this I'm gonna go with blue and it's the same stitch we've been doing we're just gonna add one blue bead to start our point now what, what we're gonna be doing is basically a diamond pattern so what decides the size of the diamonds is how many beads between each blue bead that we do. Now keep in mind that I have I have not counted. I do not know how many beads are around. So when we come back around we could wind up with an off number to make this pattern perfectly even all the way around. But that's fine because the cool thing about peyote is you can't mess it up. 
any spots that are a little bit different it just means your pattern changes what I'm gonna do is three reds in between each blue so we'll do a blue three reds and a blue all the way around to start our diamond pattern I am a poor wayfaring stranger traveling through this world of woe no sickness okay now we've come back around to, sh to show you what I was talking about have having a gap so we have three between each bead but at this back we have four right across the back so at this point our diamonds will be a little bit bigger as we go but don't worry about it it'll just make a cool different change now to make our diamond bigger what we're going to do is as we go around we're going to put one blue on each side of our blue we've added so you're going to have two reds in between the blue now instead of only one because we're reversing the the pattern. What's basically going to happen is the red is going to look like it comes to the point as the blue expands. No danger. Okay. We've come around and you can kind of start to see the points develop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extend it again. Now we're going to add a new color in here. What we're going to do is we're going to extend our blue and if you notice our red has now come to a single bead in between of a point. So what we're going to do is right here in the center of our blue, now we're going to add another color. In this case, we're going to add yellow. Now we've come around, and you can see our, yellow, our nice yellow points are developing, but our thread is now too short. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and run it back up diagonally through some previous rows. One direction, and we're going to turn and we're going to slide our needle. Basically what we're doing is we're going back and forth through these beads to kind of lock this thread so that it's not going to come to come out. Then we're going to take a pair of scissors cut it as close as you can to the beadwork itself. This is nylon of course so it's going to melt so you take a lighter and just melt that edge right in there and press it down. can't see it, it's disappeared. While we're here we'll go ahead and do that to the, our initial knot where we started. All gone. Now we're going to take our thread the beadwork tends to, to, to go a little easier the shorter your thread is, but it also means more stopping to add new thread. So it's kind of a catch-22. Do you want to not have to knot it off for a while and fight with a long thread? Or do you want the beadwork to go real fast but have to stop every few minutes? And that's kind of a decision you have to make based on where you're, how you're the most comfortable. Now what we're going to do is we're now going to work in reverse. We're now adding our thread in in the same way. As long, it doesn't matter where we start, clear over here, clear, it doesn't matter. As long as our needle winds up coming right back out where it should to do our beadwork. So we don't want to come back out in an odd place and, and our pattern be all funky. Now it's starting to get real snug, so I'm going to pull this end all the way up here, or it's going to get really hard to get that to slide through. Now if you look real close, this is our row here, so we need it to come out right here. Now our thread is out where it would have been before we knotted everything off. So now we're start right back up with our blue. Okay, we have come to our halfway point. I added in yellow, black, white, and I started the pattern back over. 
we're at this halfway point right here where we have these these three yellows and what we're going to do is from this point we're going to start backtracking to create the exact opposite side so that this will be flipped and you'll have this complete diamond set so how we're going to do that is that we're going to reverse it and go instead of spreading our yellow out like we normally would we're going to put a blue here and put the yellow back right here in the center which is going to close up in the center of our diamond. And then we're going to pull a blue over here. Put our red in. And even just in this one simple thing, you can already start to see that the form is is taking shape by reversing itself. The thing about peyote stitches is really not a complicated stitch. Once you get the once you get your head wrapped around the brick pattern of it, because um, if you've done any beading before, that's the hardest part is to get uh, get it figured out that you're you're not straight on beading. A lot of the pattern books and patterns that you will find are for loom beading, which can be used for your square stitch, but serves you absolutely no purpose in uh, peyote. If you don't want to do it this way and um, kind of and wing it and make your patterns up, you can go um, online and look up peyote stitch patterns or um, go and get yourself some peyote stitch graph paper get some colored markers or colored pencils and just sit down and play with it and design up patterns and that way you can design stuff so that you have an idea of what you're doing before you get started I prefer more just kind of seeing what what comes out just starting beating and going and as you go you'll you'll figure out what looks you'll get at a certain um, color court certain color patterns when you put certain beads certain places but if you're if you're doing a custom piece and someone says I want a rose, then yeah, you're gonna have to pay a lot closer attention to your your counts. Where when we did this, we just wrapped it around and gave ourselves a half inch. But if we were actually doing a a planned pattern, um, we would want to count and be a little more you know, exact. Okay, we've come all the way around to where we're pretty much even on both sides from our red. We've got this much thread left over. Now, if you wanted to go all the way down to the edge, you could, but for the look of this piece, I'm going to leave this much leather sticking out just for the look of it. Now, I'm going to take my needle and we're going to tie this off for the last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the needle back up through as many beads as it takes for it to get locked into place. You want to take this as far up as you can because this last row is not really a pressure point but at the same time you don't want it to accidentally get hooked on something on that last row and start to unravel. Take and turn and go back a different direction so it's not a straight shot to kind of lock that thread. Okay, now we're just going to clip that thread off of there. Now we take a lighter and what we're going to do is we're going to go over this any little spot that you can see a thread sticking out we're going to go over and just kind of melt these down to make sure that there's no thread sticking out anywhere. Now, you'll notice this is not going to move. When we started, this would slide around and now nothing. Now you have a complete piece to decorate any round thing. Now, when we were doing this, you could have taken this all the way down. You could have messed with the patterns. Just take this and play with it and see what else you can come up with. Sing his praise forevermore. I'm going.